back to Seeker Strength before we get to the subject of coaching elite athletes. Today's video is brought to you by the Seeker Strength stream of coaching. We coach athletes from a variety of different sports, from powerlifting, weightlifting, crossfit, jiu-jitsu, judo, wrestling, soccer, speed kayaking, rugby, all the way to even special forces. So we have a variety of different athletes. Myself and Fitz have a limited number of athletes, but uh, due to the nature of expanding some of our staff, you may have met or encountered Sarah, you will know that we've got some uh, extra time and we're able to take on some more athletes. We take on a stable of athletes and we don't go over a certain number between us, make sure everyone gets a good service and you get a high quality product. So that is why I am bringing this to you today. So we're encouraging people to check out our service if you're thinking about it because we'd be more than happy to take on some more athletes. Enjoy the video. Herman, right, says, how does coaching work at a world-class or Olympic level? Isn't the athlete in uncharted territory? How would a coach know what's best for them uh, than the athlete themselves would? Okay, so Dave, this is a bit of a misconception, right? The life of an elite athlete, although is uncharted territory for that athlete, the athlete's family, the club that athlete grew up training in, the possibly the county or the province that athlete was born into is probably not uncharted territory for the world of elite sport coaching. Uh, most of the time, elite sport coaches have developed their career and their skills over a huge amount of time. They'll usually have worked in an underage setting or they'll have worked in developmental setups where they are working with talented athletes who are just as talented as that Olympic level athlete are, and they're probably working with them early on in their career. Then out after a number of years, they'll work into a more senior role. And then at the kind of peak of their career, they're going to be an Olympic level coach. Almost nobody at the Olympics is doing anything that hasn't been seen before. Even if it's a, something like a technique that's going to win a world record, or it's a string of performances that are uncharted that we've never seen before something like phelps winning that many medals in a row the training that athlete does is in no way revolutionary even when you hear about revolutionary training techniques it's not it's it's drugs training good genetics and, and good environment you know it's it really isn't it may be uncharted in the area they're from maybe uncharted in the club they started training in but it's almost never uncharted territory uh, there's always a coach there who has trained an athlete just as good as you or better than you. You just haven't found them yet, you know. And in the case where the last part of this question, it's the one I really wanted to answer is like, how would the coach know what's best for them uh, than the athlete themselves would? The athlete themselves rarely knows what's best. It, good athletes, their main job is being an athlete. They don't need to think about programming. They don't need to coach themselves. They don't need to show up to training sessions and think about planning training sessions. Their whole job is being the athlete. They show up, they're told what to do, they perform what they were told to do, and then they make the changes they were asked to make. Their job is not to try and design training systems. Their job is not to have to cue themselves. Their job is not to do biomechanical analyses of anything. The job of being an athlete is so, so difficult and requires so much buy-in that they can't be coaching themselves. And they it wouldn't be realistic to expect an athlete to understand what's best for him or herself. Uh, the athletes, their job is to make sure they're in a good physical and mental condition when they show up to training and competition, perform what they're asked to perform, and then go back and recover again. Like it's not, their training is basically the same as all the other athletes. It's just the magnitude of their own performance is higher. You know, the the training for someone trying to snatch 200 kilos is pretty similar to the training of someone trying to snatch 185 kilos. It's not that different. It's just that that athlete happens to be better uh, and the numbers they're doing. So the, the training will actually, for world records, will be fairly similar for the training another athlete athlete would do to hit 95% of their world record. It just so happens that that particular athlete, for whatever reasons, has a magnitude or a capacity to hit higher values, you know. So the the actual training they're doing isn't largely different. Now they're still in an atmosphere of their own compared to an intermediate athlete or a beginner athlete or a shit amateur, you know. 
they're in their own band and their own band has that particular kind of training and elite athletes have you know certain volumes and stuff that they do in certain frequencies they do all that stuff uh but they don't it doesn't actually you don't need new methods to hit world records it's the individual athletes how they respond to that particular training is what makes the world record like lash it trains the same as all the other super heavies on the georgian team has and probably will it just so happens that he gets more out of the drugs and he's really genetically a fucking freak of nature and has a good psychology for that, you know. So he's training. That's why George Yazanitsi can get him to 225. Uh, George Yazanitsi doesn't need to have coached someone to 225 before. He just needs to take him through the correct process for performance. And that's why, you know, you can do that with a lot of the athletes. Once you figure out what works really well for athletes, you can start helping a lot of different people. It just so happens that Lasha is an individual who could snatch 225 as opposed to someone else who would only stop at 215 or 205 or 105. 